Welcome to this next presentation of Making Sense of It All. This time I've got a diagram for you, which should make it a lot easier for you to understand. I don't know if you're a gardener, because I am, and when you plant a seed as a gardener, what's the first thing that grows? The first thing that grows is the little root that goes down, and the little root then comes up with a shoot I don't know whether you can see it on this diagram. Can you see the root coming down here with a little shoot coming up here? That's how it all begins. Now, when we started our new walk, this is what it means. God put into our lives a little seed and that little seed is the beginning of a new life. But a new life only begins as a baby plant and then it has to grow. And when a plant grows, a plant needs all the fertiliser you can give it, it needs all the water it can get. And this is what we're aiming to do. Can you see the root of this big tree? And it comes all the way down to the Word of God. That's what we ought to be aiming for in our life. If we're looking for the water, and the food of life, then what we're looking for is what's in the Bible. When the hostages first came out, do you remember God gave them the water of life and he gave the encouragement of the bread of life? And that experience has to carry on all through our lives. But there are two parts here because as a Christian, sometimes we think we have to be like the top of the tree with all the fruit and we think we have to be good people and holy people and pure people and we really struggle and what happens we fail the very first temptation that comes and the first time somebody sneers at us immediately we fly out in temper and it all goes wrong again but this is the way God says first the root then the shoot comes up so we have to have what the Bible refers to as the hidden life. This is the part nobody can see as a Christian. This is where all the real activity happens. Did you know if you have an oak tree, the roots underneath an oak tree are just as big as what's on the top? We went on holiday fairly recently and we saw a tree that had been blown over. The little seed had actually fallen onto a rock and above the rock was probably about oh, three foot of soil and that tree had grown on that three foot of soil, it had grown to looking like a normal tree and then the winds came of the winter and it had felled that tree just where it stood and there was a big cartwheel of roots poking up in the air because the root hadn't gone down into anything solid and that's what it's like with us so let's have a look at this hidden life and let's see how it works the hidden life is all about the roots we've said it begins with a little root but those roots don't go very far before they meet an obstacle and here we've got a brick a brick that's been left in the soil and those bricks can be anything like discouragement for instance and when we reach discouragement we think I'm not going to read my Bible tonight I feel too tired I feel too unhappy maybe tomorrow night and if that happens very often the root just stops at that point and doesn't go any further and then we might go a little bit further down and we hit another brick in the soil or another obstacle and maybe that's opposition. Somebody at work or a member of your family or a friend will say, oh you're not going to be too serious about this religion business are you? You're carrying it too far. You're becoming fanatical and you think, oh I want to be friends with everybody. I, I don't want to look different 
perhaps I'll perhaps I won't be quite as keen not quite as enthusiastic so if you stop at that point is your life going to come down into the Word of God whatever happens whatever the obstacles that come you're going to have to push through and say Lord please help me I need your help I've already learned I can't do anything by myself I need your instruction please give me the courage please give me the strength to be able to do it and tonight I will pray I will read my Bible I will talk about you openly I don't mind if people call me a fanatic not after all you've done for me because you've given me all this possibility and then we might come a little bit further and we come and we find another obstacle and this obstacle is doubt now the reason that the doubt comes to you is because the devil's not going to give up on you and it's another of those words beginning with D do you remember we've had them already discouragement and death and disease despair despondency well here's another one doubt and we start to think does God really love me has my past really gone and we start to bring it all up again and God's told us he has taken everything he's taken from us he's put it to the bottom of the sea I had a friend once who said that it seemed to her as if Jesus was beside her with a wheel, wheelbarrow and he put all her problems into the wheelbarrow took them to the edge of the cliff and tipped them over into the bottom of the sea you can't get anything back then can you when it's gone it's gone and Jesus said don't doubt what happened don't go deep sea fishing trust in me and keep pushing through find a promise in the Bible find something I've asked you to do in the Bible learn something new take a text and memorize it in the Bible and you know when all this is happening and you're down here seemingly struggling sometimes there are things happening at the top of the tree that you might not have been aware of because on the tree up here there are green leaves coming it's beginning to look beautiful there might even be fruit there's the fruit of joy or long suffering patience and with those members of family and people that sneer at you and they will see the difference you won't because you're struggling down here you're having to fight the fight of faith of believing the promises in the Word of God you're having to listen to what God is telling you to do and while you're doing that you're changing without even noticing it and this is the wonder of it one day somebody will come up to say you and say you know you're not the person you used to be you've changed what's made the difference and you will hardly believe that it's happened and that's how it works because if we come further and further down here the roots keep coming and we overcome the things we know we shouldn't you see we've each got a sin in our lives that we call a besetting sin you know what I mean the kind of thing that you keep doing over and over again maybe you keep telling a lie maybe you keep cheating maybe you keep wanting to steal something those are your besetting sins but the overcoming can only be as we say no I won't do it but I will go to the Word of God where he has given us so many promises did you know that in the Bible there are over 3,000 promises I will be with you I will help you I will give you the words to speak all sorts of promises like that God will give us the power and the strength to live the kind of life he's asking we don't have to do it on our own we can't do it on our own because if we do if we try to tie on 
colourful fruits on our lives. What happens to a Christmas tree when the ornaments are on it? The leaves all fall off, don't they, when Christmas is finished? And the ornaments look very, very old and sad. And eventually, if you left them, they'd blow off as well. And that's what happens to our lives. So we need to keep coming down and down and down into the Word of God. There are stones that people can throw at us. Those taunts and those jeering, the sins that we do. But we have to dig deep. Let's look at some of these words. Here, there's a word that is called persistence. Perseverance, which means we don't give up. Are you the kind of person that gives up easily? You need to learn a new way of living and say, I will do it. I choose to do it. And if you say it out loud and you also say, I choose to live a different life. And Lord, you promised me that you'd be with me. Please come and help today. I know that at 11 o'clock today, I'm going to be meeting with somebody. And it's going to be a difficult meeting. They're not going to be very kind to me as a Christian. Please help me. That's the way to live. Break your day into little sections, little tiny little pieces that you can manage, little five minutes. Between now and when I put the kettle on, I'm going to be a different person. Please come with me. That's how to live the life. Not to think of everything between now and the rest of your life, because that'll fail. Take it into little tiny, tiny chunks and ask God to help you through it all. But do you notice the other things that are needed? There has to be faith. And that is believing that Jesus will do exactly what he says he will. If he says, I'll be with you, then he's right there with you. You can imagine him in one of the chairs in the room with you, helping you through the Holy Spirit and through putting thoughts into your mind which you wouldn't have thought about. Prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, I know I'm going to do something wrong. Please stop me. Please help me. Please give me the power. The shortest prayer in the Bible was prayed by Peter when Jesus asked him to do the impossible. Jesus said to Peter, Come on, walk on the water towards me. Can you walk on water? It is impossible, humanly. But Peter got outside of the boat and started walking on the water towards Jesus. But then he looked at the waves of the storm all around him and he started to sink. And he just called out, Lord, save me, very, very urgently. The Lord took him by the hand and took him straight back into the boat. That story is true and it was put in the Bible to show us that if we call out Lord save me we can keep our pathway clean we don't have to say sorry for what we've done and so you can see that there are things that come to us looking to Jesus we have to look to see what kind of life did Jesus live we can live his kind of life and that's what he's asking us to live. And above all, we have to study the Bible. Compare scripture with scripture, to read it, find out what the Bible says, and then it will become part of our life. And then the miracle will happen when we have been enmeshed and engrossed in the Holy Bible. Then we come to the top of the tree and we discover that we are beginning to have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And here they are, long-suffering or patience. We have here that we give honour to God. People can see that we're a good son of God. We're acting like the family. He is our Father. We have faith, we believe him. We become good people, reliable people. We become temperate people. We don't become fanatical. We follow through with 
with doing all things in moderation. Bible study might be very interesting to us when we first become a Christian, but we don't spend all day studying the Bible because in that way it would go stale and we find out that we become very meek people. People can try to hurt us and it doesn't do anything to us. It just runs off our back and they see the difference. We become gentle people, whereas before we were quite harsh and rough and rude. And we can become a living witness. So people looking at us, they may say nothing, but they notice that we become like Jesus. And we have peace in our hearts because we know we're doing the right thing. We know that we're growing. We know that we're doing a good thing for Jesus and we're a good witness for him. And we have joy and we have love in our life, a true love, not a sentimental love of kittens and rainbows, but a deep love of God. And that deep love of God will show itself to other sinners, sinners who are lost, sinners who need Jesus, just like we did once. And we will love them and not condemn them. So I hope that in this instalment of Making Sense of It All, you will have learned how to live the Christian life. It's as simple as this. In the next instalment, I'm going to show you a little bit more about how God helps us. And I know you're going to find that very interesting. This makes life livable. The lady right at the very beginning said, life isn't livable. This world isn't even habitable. But it is, because we can live in this world and we can live a new kind of life. So come with me to the next instalment.